This is GoPowerCat.com publisher Tim Fitzgerald. Thank you for listening to this PowerCat podcast. Make sure you never miss an episode of the PowerCat podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast network. And if you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a subscriber to GoPowerCat.com. We cover the Wildcats like no one else with our VIP customers enjoying one-of-a-kind coverage from our team of professional journalists. And sign up today for an annual subscription to GPC and grab a 30% discount on your first year. And now here's the PowerCat Podcast. The following is a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Sources podcast, presented by Blue Mark Energy, and it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the PowerCat Sources podcast. A little bit different this week. We've been following the trends of your listening habits, and we've altered it once again, and we will continue to do so until we find the sweet spot. We're going to go back to Saturday's game first on the Sources podcast, which is brought to you by Blue Mark Energy. If you have natural gas energy needs and large amounts, please contact our friends at Blue Mark Energy in Tulsa. They're K-Staters. They'd love to have your business, and they are the natural Natural gas provider for the Kansas State campuses in Manhattan and Salina. They are the real deal. Go check out Blue Mark Energy on the internet. We're going to start off today with a bunch of sound from Saturday's post game, starting with Coach Chris Kleiman and then moving into players. First, let's get going with Chris Kleiman. Well, what a great performance by the guys. I, uh, I challenge the guys this week. Um you know, to, to improve upon what we did in week one and then uh, in particular this morning to, to get the fight started quickly and, uh, and jump on them from the start. And I was so pleased we were able to get a nice kick return, take it down and get a field goal. Uh, and then the defense came up really big with a, a stop go down and get another touchdown and uh, I just thought the emotion and the energy the guys played with today uh, was what we were looking for and, and uh, I told the guys in the locker room that's a credit to our upperclassmen a credit to our captains and leadership that uh, they had the guys ready to play and so um, that was a, a fun environment out there for the guys it was great to see an awful lot of guys play our, our plan all along was to play a bunch of freshmen today didn't matter what the score was just to see how they would react um, uh, under live fire, and, and uh, we'll look at the film. But I was glad to see some guys play, and then we'll see, you know, how much they play moving forward. But I was just glad to get them out there. So uh, excited for the guys. Um, good to have this 2-0 and homestand, and we know that uh, there's a lot of tough games in, in front of us starting next week in Mississippi State. So we've got to be able to uh, enjoy this and then uh, put it behind us and go to work on Monday. If there was a time of adversity, I, I believe it came on one of the first drives when you had a holding call, a delay a game, it ended up being, uh, you know, like first and 25, you ended up scoring. And then there was a fourth and three play and the touchdown to Malik. Mm -hmm. uh, how impressed were you with the with the offense's, you know, ability to be able to bounce back? And yeah, you know, and the holding call was you're going to get those once in a while. I mean, we, we have a nice run and, and uh, get a holding call, and, and that's that's aggressive football. I, I can live with that. And then uh, Skyler was trying to change the play. Uh, we get a delay of game. Nobody panics, and that was a big key is, is nobody was panicking. And, and they, we, well, this is, we're behind the sticks. we got to get ahead of the sticks now. And so uh, did a nice job there. And then uh, I, I was, we had talked on third down that if we didn't get it, we were going to go for it on fourth down. Uh, and that was kind of us, I think, showing some confidence in Skyler to, to what's your best call? What do you like the most? And we were going to throw a quick game, and he saw uh, a press corner and said we're going to take a shot with Malik. And um, it really, really excited for Malik. Uh, to play as well as he did with some unbelievable catches and, and obviously with Skyler uh, just putting the game in his hands and saying, hey, we trust you, go win it, and uh, he played really well himself. Are, are there any facets of the game that give you concern going to Starkville? We're going to continue to improve. I, it's you know hard to 
you know, reflect on that uh, 60 minutes of football uh, that quickly. But obviously, all all facets we've got to improve upon, and that's that's the challenge. You know, you, you win two games pretty handily. You better not fall in love with yourself. You better keep striving to be better. And uh, in all phases, offense, defense, and special teams, we we have to just go back to work and continue to stack each day. We talk about it all the time. Stack great day upon great day, Monday through Friday, to give yourself a chance to be successful on Saturday. Did your wide receivers make big improvements, or is that what you've been seeing generally? Well, I thought we made great improvements at wide receiver blocking. You know, that was the area that we needed to focus on that we didn't do as good a job in week one that I thought we did a great job of week two of going and, and digging out some safeties and allowing us to get some runs. And uh, and then, uh, you know, I thought we were real efficient in the passing game, and that's what we were hoping to be. You know, once we got up that much, we weren't going to keep throwing it. But, uh, you know, Skyler to go, I think it was, it was 11 of 13. Skyler was. You know, that, that tells me a pretty, 10 of 13, pretty efficient day. You uh, had a dominant time of possession again today, almost 43 minutes. How nice is that to see your team uh, back that up for back-to-back -back games with that big a time um, of possession? That would be the recipe for success. And, and if you want to look back at uh, the, the path that we, we had taken a few, the last few years, that's what we were able to do is, is not put yourself um, – in a situation where you're playing 80 plays on, on defense. And as you could tell, Bowling Green wanted to go fast. And even though it was a different f uh, formations than a lot of the spread teams, they were more 12 personnel. They wanted to go fast. Well, if you're going fast and you're going three and out and you're kicking it back to us, and even if we don't score, but we're taking it seven minutes, you know, as a defensive guy, you're saying, come on, let's get something rolling because we've got to go right back on the field. And so um, you, you, there's some, for instance, the first drive is a great example. Yeah, we wanted to punch that thing in and get seven, but you know, we took a good chunk of time and got three and were productive. Malik Knowles not only had a bunch of catches today, he made some pretty difficult ones. How impressive was that to see and what you like most out of him? I've seen that all through fall camp. It, it's been kind of cool because uh, he makes the tough catches. Uh, and sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll drop the one that everybody expects him to make, and then he'll come back three plays later in practice, and you're like, holy cow. What a, what a great catch. And I just think he's playing with a ton of confidence, and uh, it helps when, when Skyler is confident in him and, uh, and continues to go back to him. I want to go back to the time of possession thing, but look at it from the defensive side where you, for two games now, I've totaled up 36 minutes. Your defense has been on the field total. So what does that say about your confidence on defense? But also, what are some of the cons maybe of that, of not getting as many plays out there? Um, just situations that we haven't seen yet, like the red zone defense, we have to continue. Now, if we're going to play that and have 42 minutes, none of us will complain, guys. We'll take that every week to have 42 minutes of, of possession and be out there for 17. But uh, just w we haven't stacked a ton of plays on defense to get a great evaluation of uh, the guys that maybe don't have as much Big 12 experience. You know, Trey Deshaun, uh, Reggie, and, and those guys that have played a ton of Big 12 snaps, AJ, yeah, the, you know where they're going to be, whether they play 28 snaps or 80 snaps. It's the younger guys that we're trying to continue to grow defensively that haven't played a ton of snaps, which tells us we've got to continue to put those guys in practice situations against our offense, whether it's a third down period, whether it's a red zone period, to try to make practice as difficult as you can to simulate the game reps. We heard about Joe Irvin a lot in fall camp from players, coaches, but Jacardi, you're right, was the first freshman to get carries. What, what's he shown you? Um, just a bigger back. Uh, I think they're both exceptionally talented guys. Um, we just we wanted to check out Jacardier because he has that size. Uh, Joe's a pretty electric guy as well. They both are going to have really bright futures here. Uh, but we have the upperclassmen backs that we're really pleased with, and so we just I thought I was glad to get both of them some carries. You know, Joe was able to get eight. Jacardier was able to get 14. That's great experience for those guys. And um, you know, whether or not we'll utilize the four-game rule. Or if we'll continue to play those guys, that, that'll still be yet to be determined. Philip Brooks had some struggles fielding punts. How big concern? Yeah, is he's, that? he struggled a little bit today, but I've got a lot of confidence in, in Philip. He had the big kick return to start the start the game, which was a huge play. And, and, and Philip's a, a great young man, confident kid, and we'll get him back on track. But uh, uh, Philip will will continue to, to return punts for us. He's a, he's an exceptional player. We'll get him back on track. Obviously got a, a little bit more pressure there uh, on the quarterback, getting a sack, getting more tackles for loss. How pleasing was that to see out of the out of the defense? Yeah, it was really good. We, we pressured a little bit more, and, and we kind of encouraged the D-line to kind of cut it loose a little bit. 
which was uh, which was good to see. Uh, they laid their ears back and and rushed the passer. And uh, I thought uh, Coach Hayes uh, once again called an exceptional game plan to give the guys in position to make plays as well. James Gilbert has to be one of the hardest working running backs K State's had in a while. Um, is he doing anything right now that surprises even you? Well, because we didn't know a lot about James other than the the character of the young man, I, I just love being around him because he's he works his tail off and you'd think he's been in the program for four years, not six months. Uh, he's got fast friendships with all these guys. Um, he's become a wildcat pretty quickly. Uh, I'm just so impressed with his maturity, his toughness, and the fact he's a one heck of a teammate. He's on the field just as fast when somebody scores, you know, whether it was Harry uh, making a play or, or Jordan, he's out there because he's excited for the guys. And, that, and that's unselfish play that we have to have and it's fun to see. Now let's turn our attention to the players. We're going to start off with the defensive side of the ball and then move into the offense, finishing up with the running backs. We're going to start off this collection of audio from our video producer, Zach Carlson, starting with senior defensive tackle, Trey Deshaun. I think we've proven that, like, we're a contender. Um, we love to play the game. That's a big thing. Uh, you, I think you could see that, especially in the stands, is that everybody's flying. Everybody has great energy. Uh, the big thing now is, like, as, as captains, we need to really tone into the details of, hey, we're playing a contender. You know, we're about to get into the heart of our schedule, stuff like that. What does it say about this defense to get the shutout, you know, despite at times them having some pretty good field position to, to be, able to be able to get a score? A goose egg is, is always big. Um, I don't know how many goose eggs, maybe three since I've been playing here, so three or four. I was talking to Reggie about that, but I think that's big uh, every time we have a goose egg. And, um, you know, when they get down in the red zone and uh, our side of the field, those turnovers are big. And I, I, I remember telling those guys, like, hey, we're keeping points off the board. That's big. So... Had six tackles for loss this week. Had, I think, one or maybe two sacks in there as opposed to zero last week. How much of an improvement is that this week for the D-line? I, I think it's a big improvement, but uh, I think we got more to give. Uh, I don't think we, we did as well as um, we can. Um, and that's just, we're, I'm talking about pre-snap pre -snap stuff like that, you know? Like, you're watching the game, but what are we looking at before the snap? Like, if we know it's passed, let's go. You know, and I think that's what's gonna make, gonna make a difference in us getting better. You guys have been on the field like a combined 36 minutes in the first two games. What does that say about how dominant you've been here defensively? That's huge. I mean, every time um, we get out there, I tell the guys, you know, three and out. Let's get a three and out. Let's get off the field. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. Our, we want we want the offense having the ball and, and putting points on the board. But um, I think that'll be a different story going on from here. You know, we're gonna we're gonna be taking more snaps. We're gonna be um, in for the grind. Now we move to linebacker Elijah Sullivan. Obviously, just pitching a shutout has to feel really good, I imagine, in that defense room right now. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's, it's, it just gives us a, a big confidence going into the next week playing Mississippi State as well, too. So, um, I just like to everybody play. You know what I'm saying? We got the goose egg, like you said. So, after a few of those plays, you know, like the the muff punt from Phillip, and you know they were in a really good position to score. What does it say about the defense that they're able to to really lock down and not even give them a field goal at that point? Oh, I think it says a lot, especially you know last uh, game we didn't come out so strong in the second half. So we just put emphasis on more of the second half because, you know, we're going to come out and start flying in the first half because everybody's pumped up, you know what I'm saying? But it shows that how, how we can get a sudden change and still stop them from scoring, you know, even with, whether it was a field goal or anything. It just shows how much deep, you know what I'm saying, how everybody can corral to the ball as well too. So I know it's probably tough without seeing the film, but yeah. just kind of your initial thoughts on your performance individually. Uh, I feel like I did good. I got a couple hits, one on the quarterback, one on the sideline. Um, but we rolled so much, man. It's it's, I'm just glad to see everybody going. But I feel like I did good at the end of the day. I get my grade sheet tomorrow, so we'll see. Daniel Green gets in there, forces that fumble, and I think it was Khalid that comes up with, with the ball. How exciting is that for him, getting in there as a freshman and making a play like that? Uh, I feel like, well, to me, yeah, it, it's very exciting to see. But for him being a freshman with his first game, actually playing and whatnot, I know it gives him a lot of confidence, you know, and that's a fellow native. He's from Georgia as well, too, though. So I'm always happy when my Georgia boys get in and do a thing. But, yeah, that, I like that play. That, that play showed me something, too. So You guys are going to face a, a pretty good team now, and the defense, if you try to take it in a negative way, has not been on the field all that much, haven't seen a whole lot. How do you, I guess, uh, get ready for that type of a game with little time on the field? Um, I get you that, yeah. We haven't had a lot of plays on defense on our ball, side of the ball, but it just puts, you know what I'm saying, shows us how 
how much more focused we got to be just with more plays that we know we're going to get to. And at the end of the day, it's football too as well. So, I mean, we know we got a big contender that we got to actually go to next week too. So, it's going to be a game. I know that for a fact. It's going to be a game. I know you take, try to take it you know, one game at a time, not really uh, put too much emphasis. But I got to imagine after the last two weeks, you guys are going down there with, with a pretty good amount of confidence. Oh, yeah. Facts, facts. And, um, I don't know. It's, 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 I feel like it's a rivalry game just because last year too. And we, I don't know. It, that one still gets to me. I know we took the L, but and then that's the game I also got hurt to in my bad. But, yeah, it's, it's, we know we got a game next week. Here is freshman receiver Malik Knowles. You had a couple of drops last week, but you made up with some pretty amazing catches. Go through those touchdown catches here today. Uh, I mean, I, I can't take all the credit for me for it. I first thank the O-line and Skyler for even just trusting in me after last week. So, you now my goal for this game was just to, when the ball's in there, just make a play. Had a few drops last week and probably could have come out with two touchdowns. So how nice is it to get them back this week? Uh, as a reliever, that was my main focus throughout the week, just to make sure that won't happen again. On that wrestle for the touchdown that they had to review, were a little worried that they were going to overturn that? Oh, uh, no, sir. <laughs> what would you say your connection's like with Skyler, just in terms of linking up on plays like that? I think it's good. It just comes from practice. It's making it plays every day in practice. How good was he today? Uh, he was perfect. You had 100 yards receiving all of last year, and now you had 99 today. Do you feel like you kind of opened up, kind of made a little statement of your own today? Uh, kind of. You know, the season's still early, so I still have a lot more to go, a lot more to show. What are your goals? First, is just automatic, just team, uh, team win. So that's number one. My accolades can come afterwards. Here's your starting quarterback, Skyler Thompson. Yeah, I felt like we, we came out and played well today. Um, definitely left some, left some things out there. Um, didn't score our first possession and felt like we, we could have. Um, and, you know, we, we, we played great today, but we, we, in saying that, we, we left some things out there. I think that's a good thing for us, though. Just, um, you know, I'm so proud of this team and the way that we approached this week with all the emotion going into last weekend, uh, coach getting his first win. I know there's a lot of, a lot of people talking about how we would, would respond and, and come play this weekend. Um, I felt like we came out with a lot of energy and matched the way that we did last week. Um, it's just going to be really important that we carry this over into uh, to next week, going on the road for the first time. There's a lot of new stuff going on. Um, first road game, um, it's going to be loud. SEC team, there's a lot of stuff going on. So just going to have to focus on our, the details of our work this week, and I'm going to do my best to lead the guys and have a great week of practice. How do those two touchdown passes feel for you? I mean, they, they both look yeah. pretty well on the money. Yeah, yeah they were uh, the, the first one in the league on fourth down was one of those where – if he didn't catch it, I probably would have got my, my butt ripped. But um, he had a good release. And we've been talking on some previous plays where the corner was playing heavy inside. Um, and Malik was like, hey, I, th I can beat this guy on a fade. So um, whenever we, we had that called, and um, he had a great release and just gave him a chance. And he made a great play. His second play that he, that he scored on, um, I kind of underthrew it a little bit. And he came back and attacked the ball. And it was just, it's great. It's great. It gives me a lot of confidence just putting the ball in the vicinity of a guy and he can just go get it and make a play. Um, so I was excited for for him to have experience those two moments and get some confidence going. You know, that was, that was big for him. So uh, he'll, uh, he'll be great and just got to continue to keep getting better and we will. Now let's move to the running backs. First with the North Carolina senior transfer, Jordan Brown. You uh, walk us through that long touchdown run you had there, kind of how that opened up for you. Um, O-line just did a great job, um, opened up a hole and made sure I went through untouched and I just had to do the rest. Back-to-back -back weeks where you guys have gone over 300 yards on the ground. I mean, what does that say about this offensive line and the running back unit together? Uh, I think it says that offensive line is doing a great job, you know, getting their blocks, getting up to linebackers and letting us do our work once we get to the next level. James also, you know, has a second straight week. He leads the team in rushing, goes over 100 yards. What do you see out of him, kind of as a as a running back, evaluating his game? He was doing a great job reading his blocks and, you know, um, breaking tackles and doing we, what we know he's capable of. A lot of action for some freshmen. We fired up to see that from those guys. So what do you see from them in practice? Show you they're ready to contribute here. Yeah, it's always great to be able to see those guys go in and. And run the ball, um, and we've seen seen them in practice make plays, and we know that they're capable of doing it in a game. Do you feel like you guys were were again a, a fresh team, being able to come in with fresh legs there, and and not really put too much of a workload on one guy over the other in terms of running backs? 
Yeah, I think we were able to rotate well and make sure everybody was fresh when they were in the game so they could be at their 100%. How fun was this offense being able to to score you know upwards in the, in the 50s and, and kind of put up a performance like that while the defense is pitching a shutout? It was a lot of fun um, to be able to go in and get our work done and be able to send in some young guys to get some experience as well. What does this do for your confidence moving forward into next week? Obviously, a big game at Mississippi State. Um, it's a big confidence boost, you know, to put points on the board and. Um, have our offense working efficiently. Um, we just have to keep rolling into next week. And now we wrap up our download of this audio from our video work with James Gilbert, the senior running back transfer from Ball State. I think we proved that we can run the ball and, you know, y'all can prepare for it, try to stop and watch as much as I want to, but that's what we're going to do. We make no secret. We want to run the ball no matter who you are. And you just gonna, it's going to be one of those things like a boxing match. You know, who's going to stop hitting first? And we're not going to stop for sure. I know, I mean, you scored the one play later, but was it frustrating not to finish off the – because it ended up being 51 <laughs> yards, could have been 56. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, frustrating, you know, when you get plays like that, you see green grass, you got to take advantage, you got to score. So, hopefully – Especially uh, with the spin move. I mean, right, right, right. Like a it's, big highlight. For yeah, him. but um, just <laughs> happy the coaches didn't take me out and let me finish the drive off. So, <laughs> thankful. Thank you, Coach Anderson. <laughs> right, thank, thank you, Anderson. No problem. Back-to-back performances where you go over 100 yards, that's got to feel good, I imagine. In our position group, we don't look at like touches or touchdowns or stats or nothing like that. We look at wins and losses. So anytime we can get a win, a big win like we did, and show a statement to our next opponent, I feel good as going into Mississippi State week three. So I'm not really into that, or no nobody on the team is really into the stats or touchdowns or nothing like that. We just want to get the win and get the results. Okay, so the team overall as a whole, back to back performances going over 300. Mm-hmm. That I mean, to be able to do it once is impressive, but two straight weeks has to has to really give you guys a lot of confidence right now. Right. Um, like I said, we made no secret we're running around the ball. We don't care who you are, you know. You're going to have to stop us. You can study as much film as you want to, but it's going to be like a boxing match. Who's going to stop here first? And we're not going to stop. You know, we're going to keep going. You know, obviously take a little bit of time to celebrate this one, but next week is a really big one, you know, facing an SEC team. That's, that's something that didn't see a whole lot of teams of this caliber uh, back at Ball State just mm-hmm. because of the, the conference you were in. What does this opportunity mean for you? Um, it's a it's a great opportunity for our football team you know we're about to test to see where we're at as a football team going into week three you know the first two teams we're supposed to beat those teams we's a better team than both of those teams so um it's, it's gonna be another statement game you know so um i feel like we're gonna come to work on monday practice put up a game plan a game plan and go from there finally let's bring this portion of the players to a wrap with my conversation with daniel green the freshman linebacker who had the first sack of the season for kansas state i apologize the audio quality isn't quite as good on this i hope you enjoy hearing from the very soft-spoken daniel green how fun was that it was very fun it was amazing amazing atmosphere amazing like how we played on both sides of the ball had a game plan went out to execute it that's just Great feeling, just knowing that you executed the plan. Did you feel like you played better than last week? Yeah, for sure. I just felt more comfortable out there. Last, yes, um, last Saturday was my first game, mm-hmm. so just taking the rust off a little bit, and getting comfortable with just the game speed, how it is up here. And I did. I just feel like I played a lot better. And the whole defense seemed to be. I mean, last week's numbers looked great, but you're more aggressive, more tackles for loss, etc. Yeah, I think it was also with like the style of play that this team played with. There were a lot of uh, a lot of counter team power and crunch. So we had to know that we had to get down here and make plays, especially the corners outside linebackers. We just had to make plays today. Part of that uh, sack and fumble recovery there. What was it like to be part of the first sack of the year? Uh, it was. Yeah, I didn't even know that until they told me. Yeah, that's a great feeling. Yeah, I just going out there just doing my assignment, got a sack. So. That's a great feeling. What does it say about the defense? I mean, really first time all game that they've been, you know, kind of had to pin, pin back in their own territory there and guys were able to deliver. What was that like to get it done in one play? Uh, well, yeah, we we just knew, like, man, like the field position, we got to make a stop on defense. And that being the play to change the uh, change the uh, possession. So that was a great feeling, a great play. It was right after Philip had muffed the punt. Were you guys any more fired up to go out there and get a stop just because you guys had just you know lost the ball? Well, yeah. The we offense has been playing good all day. Special teams been playing good all day. It was just defense. We're up. We just gotta keep keep going. Just keep. We just knew what we just had to do. We had to stop him. So we did that. Oh, was it important to keep the shutout going, or would you have been okay if they had gotten like a field goal or something? Oh, you always, as a defense, you never want people to score on you. So uh, we had a great game plan, went out there, executed, and 
ended up getting the shutout. How excited are you for Mississippi State? Oh, I'm very excited. Uh, just another challenge and another team that we got to prepare for. Come back Monday, work, grind, and get right back to work, get right back to it. How much does the enthusiasm level of this squad benefit you going to Starkville next Saturday? Oh, yeah. Uh, coming off of two good wins, just having that momentum is, is good coming coming uh, into a good team like Mississippi State. They're not a team that we can just go in there just expecting to win. We, we know it's going to be it's gonna be a good game. It's going to be a fight right when we come out the gate. So And we're going to their house, so we just know we got to come in and execute. What's been the communication level of the kind of three-man rotation of linebackers so far? Uh, we just all we just all we all just rotate and get a lot of plays in. So uh, we I know when I go in, I usually come in for like five, and uh, five will come in, come in for three, and three will come in for two. So that's just like the rotation. It, easy to stay fresh that way, and, oh, yeah. and come off and see kind of what's happening on on the field. Oh yeah, we uh, we were just talking about the after the game is how fresh we feel, especially with the defense playing so well. We're getting three and outs, offense out there holding the ball for a long time, so we've really been resting. So we're going into next week feeling very good as a defense. Like a lot of our players been feel rested, and we play fast. What's the key been the key to getting your third down stops and being that successful up front? Them, them putting pressure on quarterbacks, our uh, blitzes, getting home and stuff like that, putting pressure on quarterbacks. Sometimes they not always get home, but sometimes it's that pressure getting in the quarterback's face. You make the bad decision or make the uh, bad play or incompletion, you know, so those are some of the keys. Have you had many plays where it's, you've had offensive linemen on you? Or have you been flowing pretty freely, freely too? Oh, yeah. I think every play, uh, I have offensive linemen on me. Like today, earlier, how you just talked about that sack fumble, I even had offensive linemen on that play kind of outside move what I'm supposed to do and end up getting a sack. That's it for the first portion of today's Sources podcast at GoPowerCat.com. After the break, we have a guest in studio with us. Former Kansas State running back Keithan Valentine joins me to talk about his experiences playing for Ron Prince and Bill Snyder and what he sees from the Chris Kleiman era at Kansas State. Stay locked in. The Power Cat podcast will be right back. Diets and workouts, you've done the work, so why can't you get to your goal weight? That's because up to 70% of your weight is predetermined by your genetics. So while you've been told that it's all about your willpower, you're actually fighting your biology. Don't do it alone. Found's doctor design program uses medication as part of a treatment plan that targets your body's unique biological needs so that your body works with you and not against you. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's weight loss program is right for you. We now send it back to Fitz in the WTC gig-powered studios. Welcome back to the PowerCat Sources Podcast, your Tuesday edition of the podcast at gopowercat.com. We're sponsored by Blue Mark Energy. Make sure you call Blue Mark for all your natural gas needs. If you are a big consumer of natural gas, they are your peeps. Based in Tulsa, owned by K-Staters, a good way to do business. We're joined now by Keithan Valentine. One of my favorite former running backs. You were, man. You played so hard. You played so hard. I was just looking at your stats. Your senior year, you averaged six yards a carry. And I remember always thinking, because you were backing up Daniel Thomas. Yes. And he was pretty good. Oh, man. He was so good. Yeah, he was. But I was always thinking, they need to find more carries for Keithan. Because you had 55 carries your senior year under Coach Snyder. Coach Snyder came back your senior year. So you made the transformation from... Prince to Snyder. Right. We'll get into that. Um, <laughs> but uh, you had six touchdowns on 55 carries. Man, you know what's crazy about that? Uh, I, I always I pinch myself because, like you said, I was behind uh, Daniel Thomas. That dude was great. He was a freak. He had so many God-given abilities, man. And um, uh, he led the Big 12 in uh, yards, I think. And I uh, led the Big 12 in uh, yards per Per Carrot. touch, yeah. Carrot. So we we had a good thing going, and that uh, man Dicky had that offensive line rolling, and we was just rolling. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah, uh, it it really was a, a fun season because I think everyone was worn out from the Ron Prince three years that felt like thirteen. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that going through that experience. So um, it's tough because uh, I came in when he was leaving out, and Coach Knight coming in. 
when I initially got here, man, the dude was, uh, you know, full of life. He yep. was he was smart. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah. Man, he get a bad rap, but that dude is a genius. He's very intelligent. He's a genius. But I would say, without saying too much, I just think that the um, – the the locker room from the coaches to the players it was just man it was like a I don't want to say toxic but it was just like it wasn't it wasn't no it wasn't fluent in there like it was yeah. like man what I want to say it, he he seemed to have a knack for pitting people against each other so yeah like he would I don't want he would he would like. Not embarrass the coaches, but like you know, he would do stuff you should do behind closed doors. Right, and that created the coaches doing it to the players, and the players doing it to the players, and the coach. It just wasn't a good atmosphere, man. And he had the formula, you know what I'm saying? I, I, but I think like I don't know if the power got to his head or the stress uh, with Coach Snyder get to his head, mm -hmm. I, something. Because I'm gonna say it, that place was toxic, man. Yeah. I, I talked to some kids, some dudes. Now I say kids, some of my uh, ex players now that still still haven't get got away, uh, gotten over that stuff. I know. If I wouldn't have had a tough family, and you know my faith in God, man, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know what would happen to me because that place was bad, man. It, it was an amazing situation because you look back and it feels like the teams were two and ten, but you guys were. Bold contending the whole exactly. time. He went to a bowl his first year and in, in 2008, your first year at Kansas State. You guys were hanging around the bowls. What were your thoughts when Coach Snyder was hired to come back? Well, see, like I wasn't the, the, the Kansas guy that knew the stories about Coach Snyder yeah. and knew that uh, he was amazing or whatever. And I was almost like everybody, oh, Coach Snyder is Coach Snyder. I'm like, man, what, what's the big deal? Yeah. I did my research. And uh, man, when he came, man, you, you feel like you wanna, you know, you wanna run through a wall for that guy. Cause, but the first time I met him, he came in and was like, "You guys wasn't a bad football team. You guys just didn't finish." He said, "You guys need to be tougher." And the first practice, it was like single digits or something like that. I remember. Mm -hmm. Instead of working indoor, we were outside running hundreds. Couldn't feel your toes. Couldn't feel your hands. I promise, I got frostbite. And and he just started making us tough from then on and I was like I, I don't like this guy I don't know I don't know what everybody's talking about but I don't like this guy and man by the spring was over man I, I wish I had four more years yeah yeah he uh he really knew how to put together a team sadly it kind of slipped towards the end but yeah. uh we shouldn't forget that he did build it in the course of four years to 2012 into a Big 12 championship, and that was rather remarkable, almost more remarkable than the first one in some man. ways. Uh, what are you doing now? You're here in Manhattan, yeah, right? Yeah, I work. Um, I'm working with the railroad. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we some I, like I normally work out at Topeka, but right now I'm on like a traveling gang. And um, man, I've thought about leaving Manhattan. I, I just like it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I People are like, it. what you doing in Manhattan is boring, but I like that. I come from Baton Rouge where it's rough mm -hmm. and tough, being close to so many big cities, and I like the quiet. I could raise, I got two girls and a wife, raise my family. If I need to go somewhere big, I could travel. That's exactly so where I, I feel. just I, I'm, I'm just good with it, man. So I, I could lay low. You know what I'm saying? I go to my football games, and I, I just like it. My father-in-law was an engineer with a – Burlington Northern Santa Fe. Okay. So I understand the railroad life. Yeah. It's it's an odd set of hours and Weird. work demands. Man, I, I work a schedule right now where I work Tuesday to Tuesday, then I'm off until the next Tuesday, and I work nights, 7 to 5. So, yeah, got some weird stuff going on. That there. is bizarre. <laughs> Things got to get from point A to point B, and gotta someone's got to do it. I, you've been watching this team now under Coach Kleiman, and you talked about kind of the honeymoon that every new coach has with their, right. their players. Uh, this seems tangible, though. I mean, the players have really bought in in a way that I don't think any of us could have ever imagined. Yeah, so because um, of my crazy schedule, I missed the first game, but I, I came in the second. And the first one, I was like, you know, that's what he's supposed to do. But, you know, coming back from Coach Snyder, you know, Coach Snyder tried to keep it vanilla, you mm -hmm. know, try to keep it cool. Don't want to embarrass the, the uh, smaller schools. But, man, they, they, they got it cranked up. And it seemed like Clim Climbing been here like five years. I know. The execution. Crazy. Like, I haven't seen the, the coach's film and been able to, to break every down. But, like, you know, not too many mistakes, running so many fun, uh, formations. And don't, and these guys are barely making mistakes. Like, that's it. That that's, that's incredible. You know, if they're playing smaller schools, but man, that is rare. And 
I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It's not like offensively they're playing something really basic and simple where they can't screw it up. They've got movement, motion, oh players coming in and out, and it just seems cohesive from offensively speaking from the first guy to the twentieth guy because they'll get the twentieth guy in early. Exactly, and and he's playing these like what like ten or ten to fifteen freshmen play this Crazy. week, man, yeah. and they're just they're rolling and they're not satisfied, and you can see the coaches are like. This is not a job, and this is just not football for these. They they having fun, and they they are ready to to, to take it to newer heights. Man, I, I'm excited about it. Yeah, the NCAA doesn't always look out for the student athlete. They like to say they do, but mm-hmm. the, this new rule where freshmen can play four games and not burn a year is really good. Yeah, that's a blessing, man. Yeah, it's really good. They got two freshman running backs in, uh, and you know I think. One of them, at least, will use that redshirt year, burn that redshirt year. Yeah. Um, but the other one just got some playing time. They played six running backs in the game, not to count fullbacks or other guys who carried the ball because nine people carried the ball. Uh, I am was never a believer in running back by committee. I saw it in the early days of Bill Snyder with guys like Mike Lawrence and Eric Hickson doing it. Uh, but they're doing a committee of three. And by God, it works. It's amazing. Man, listen, you know, I'm a running back. I, like I said, I played b- behind Daniel Thomas. And, you know, if we would have been in that system, oh, my gosh. oh, I, I wouldn't great, but me and him being in a system like this would be amazing. And and these guys are like, they, you can see that they, they don't hate each other. They no. like each other. But you see them. Every time I get this ball, I got to make something happen. I'm going to compete, and I'm got to make some, you know, make some yards. And it's a beautiful thing, man. And. And and Skyler, like, it's been incredible. He's he's not like he's handing the ball off a lot, but he's getting to take his shots and throw the ball. And that dude looks so poised and so confident. You know, they got better competition coming, but yep. he's just in the command and just man. It, I don't I don't know what they. It's explain. crazy. It it's really crazy. is. You got two senior grad transfers, so they they've played a lot of football in James Gilbert and Jordan Brown, but uh, to come into a new system. And just settle in. And Harry Trotter was also a transfer. He was in the system a year but didn't play. So three first-year players at running back. And they look like they've been together for years. They look like they're perfectly comfortable with sharing the spotlight. And they all seem to know their roles, even though they don't seem really defined. Right. They've, they've settled in. It's it's fun to watch. And and you talk about playing with Daniel. It wouldn't be like you guys would be rotating. You guys could be on the field together. And getting your touches. And, yeah, like you said, they came in and they just they just jumped right into it. That's why I don't I, – how many they, – they taking practices away and these guys still picking up this stuff. I know. Uh, it's, it's crazy. And you another thing I want to give a shout-out is probably nothing to do with nothing we were talking about, but I think people need to understand the work that Coach Dawson does. Oh, yeah. You – the fr- like he's dealing, man. These their bodies transfer, and they just are different. Yeah, he'd be a great person to talk to. Although he won't talk to the media because yeah. he's, uh, I mean, mm-hmm. he's straight out of the Marines. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's he gave, well, no nothing to do with us. Right. Absolutely nothing to do with us. But uh, he's a good dude. Too. He he changed his way. You can see physically that he altered what he was doing to fit the head coach. He did, particularly with the offensive linemen. They are leaner. Uh, they kept their weight, right. but it's muscle mass, and they're just leaner and and more able to move around. It's impressive. That offensive line's playing some ball. Man, they're playing some ball. And, and like I always try to I throw this out, that was the biggest win we got from KU them, them years ago, getting Coach Dawson. Yeah. Oh That's yeah. When things start going down. Oh yeah. I mean, good. everyone wants to talk about Mangino leaving, but the Mangino Dawson thing was really, and Todd Reesing, they've got a quarterback. Yeah, exactly. They haven't had a quarterback since. Right. But. It just all kind of click for him, and yep. you got to have those three things. You got to have strength, and conditioning, head coach, and a quarterback. And if you don't have one of them, you're fighting uphill. Man, they had them all, and now they don't have any of it. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a pinata. Yeah, um, oh, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, it was hysterical. Guy with a crutch. He, he, he wanted in. Yeah, he, he got his action. Um, what do you think this team needs to get better at? We don't know enough about them, but you know some of the plays like. Uh, just the small things, you know, like drop passes, right. uh, missed tackles. Because um, we're gonna get some, we gonna get some uh, some teams in here with some talent, right. and you you can't make those mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, you know, came off a punt. Yeah, you came off a punt, and I like that kid Brooks. Yeah, uh, but you just got to do those small things, and I I think they're gonna be all right, man. Because it looked like uh, the system worked for the guys, and and we could, I think they could run with anybody. 
I heard you mention to D. Scott before we started that you seriously thought about going to Mississippi State. Yeah, I, st- I, I thought about going to the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah. no, that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. yeah, going to the game, man. Uh, when I got this schedule, I didn't know if it was going to work out, and it wasn't going to work out with my work schedule. But uh, I thought about going, and I want to go there. You, you heard about the Cowbells? Are you going? Oh, no, I'm, I'm not going. The rest of my guys are, though. Oh, good. Well, yeah, I don't want to hear it. the Cowbells. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they're, it's stupid. Oh, it, it's, it works to their advantage, but it's stupid. Man, yeah, but that's going to be a great atmosphere because uh, those people in Starkville, they call it Stark Vegas. Mm-hmm. They're they going to be ready. They're going to want to. They're going to want to tear us up. They're going to. They're going. They're going to overlook us. They're going to think we're yeah. the same team they played last year. Well, and based gonna on be last different. year, why not? Right. Exactly. They yeah. manhandled the team <laughs> last year, um, and I don't think that'll happen. They K State may not win that game, but I don't think they're going to get pushed around like they did last year. Mm-mm. Well, of course, this isn't as good a Mississippi State team either. They right. like four guys drafted in the NFL draft. Yeah, so. yeah, that's not the same defense and not the same – well, I guess not the same quarterback. I, I think we got a shot, but it's hard to go into an SEC school yeah. and beat them at home. So it's, I look at this as it's all opportunity. Yeah. Unless you get beaten up with injuries and you get blown out, uh, that's the only downside. That's but it's it. still one loss. Right. You got everything to gain here. You got everything to gain. And I think they're going to they're gonna take it by the horns. And I think they're going to do well. Well, that's, I, I'm feeling good about this. I haven't made my prediction yet. But I, there's just something about this team. And for all we've learned in the first two weeks of the season, there's no way uh, we know enough to make a solid prediction on this game. Not at all. But, boy, by mid-afternoon on Saturday, we're going to know a whole lot about Kansas State football. A whole lot. Keith, and thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's good to see you. You're one of my favorites. We were talking about it before you came in, how you always came in the, the media room and handled your interviews like a pro. I appreciate I'm it. Glad life is good for you and, and hope it continues to be that way. And I, I love seeing your fight, man. Keep fighting. You I inspire will. people. And thank you, Keith, and I appreciate you stopping in on your day off and speaking with us and sharing your thoughts on Kansas State football. And after this short break, we're going to focus our attention on the new South End Zone project that was announced by Athletics Director Gene Taylor. It's part of a $105 million facility upgrades coming to Kansas State Athletics. We'll cover that more and hear from Gene Taylor right after this break on the PowerCat Sources Podcast, sponsored by Blue Mark Energy. Stay locked in. The PowerCat Podcast will be right back. Is your January looking dry? Get some lotion. Get a humidifier. And better yet, Get Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can compare prices across local stores to get the best price on a huge selection of drinks perfect for dry January. Every single time. Non-alcoholic wines? Have a look. Ready-made mocktails? Grab a straw and order them up. Beer without the alcohol? (laughs) Yep, take your pick. You can find all of them here. In the app. In that phone. That's in your hand. Could it be any simpler? Nope, not a chance. So shop for great deals on all your dry January beverages or other drinks and get them delivered to your door or blanket fort, maybe. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. And don't forget to lotion up your elbows. They're looking a little dry. We now send it back to Fitz in the WTC gig powered studios. Welcome back to the PowerCat Sources podcast sponsored by Blue Mark Energy. On Saturday, Gene Taylor announced a $105 million project that will really transform Bill Snyder Family Stadium and other parts of the athletic facilities around the stadium. It was one year to the day after Gene Taylor unveiled a $210 million facility master plan that K-State's third-year athletics director revealed the department's largest capital initiative ever during Saturday's win over Bowling Green took place at halftime. Its cost will total $105 million, covering construction of four projects that directly impact all 16 sports at K-State, and roughly two-thirds of the money, $69 million, has already been raised for the project dubbed Building Champions. The next step in K-State's athletics facility master plan will include a $50 million upgrade of the south end zone of Bill Snyder Family Stadium, a new indoor football practice facility at $24.5 million, a new volleyball arena at $17.5 million, and an Olympic training facility 
valued at $13 million. But the feature of this project is the south end zone project that will start immediately after the end of this season and benefit both football and basketball fans with alterations to Bramlage Coliseum. The south end zone will transform the south concourse by providing a completely covered walkway area. It will add permanent concessions and restrooms for the first time on the south concourse in the history of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. This will also allow fans sitting in the south end zone of the stadium easier access to utilize 24 new points of sale and the spacious 1,400 square foot men's and women's restrooms while also alleviating congestion and lines to those facilities on the west and east sides of the stadium. Two new video boards will be added to the southwest and southeast corners of the stadium to mirror the two video boards in the north end zone. And a new and improved sound system will also be added to the construction of the south end zone. A new 13,500 square foot club space will replace the current Legends Room area in Bramlage and be accessed from the concourse at Bramlage Coliseum and by using the newly created vertical circulations located to the west and east side of the space. The club space will feature a large center bar, a new kitchen, servicing fans at both football and basketball games, tall ceilings, and numerous flat screen TVs, and plenty of seating and tables to enjoy food, drinks, and friends. On football game days, this space will be utilized for fans sitting in the new south end zone premium seats. Plans for this space currently include 300 club seats, 10 suites, 8 loge boxes. For fans attending men's and women's basketball games, a new club will be open, but game day basketball plans are still being determined at this time. Other new improvements in Bramlage include pushing the doors and walls out by 17 and a half feet for the northwest and northeast points of entry. These renovations will add nearly 4,500 square feet of new concourse space in Bramlage. A new dining club will be built on the north end of Bramlage seating overlooking the basketball court as well as cosmetic enhancements including limestone walls throughout the interior concourse of Bramlage Coliseum. It's a weighty project, a gutsy project, and will all be funded by private donations and athletic revenues. Here we go with Gene Taylor, who spoke to the media during Saturday's halftime at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. You know, we just had to get through some uh, approvals and make sure we had kind of our I's dotted and T's crossed, and we knew we weren't going to be able to get that. You know, the Kansas Bill Regents had to had to look at it first, and so, and we just felt obviously the second home game gave us a little more pre- preparation time. How long did it take to to get to this point, fundraising wise, where you're at? You know, it's been awesome in terms of the amount of time it's been. Uh, we unveiled the master plan a year ago about this time, and we started seeing some of our top donors and friends and really just explaining the master plan and really asking them what do they thought the priorities would be and what they wouldn't see, and then we would go back to those top donors and make ask. And uh, So I would say maybe eight months from the time, uh, from, from the time we announced the master plan. Uh, so it's been a it's been a great response by our donors. We have a long way to go, obviously, but to have that much raise in a short time really just tells you the commitment our fan base has and our donors. Played at a time frame for at least starting on the south end zone improvements. What would the time frame be on the other projects? Well, again, a lot's going to be on the fundraising. Um, so my goal or our goal is to have everything started and or finished in the next three to five years. And what I mean by that is we know the south end zone is going to start next summer, May or June. And while we're continuing to fundraise, and maybe while that's being built, we can maybe have the money raised to start one of the next two projects, if not both of them. So within the next three to five, have everything at least under construction. You know, at this point with the football practice facility, like how many parking spots that would take off? Right now, and it could change, and uh, right now we're estimating about 400 parking spaces, but we're also already identified where we're going to pick those up and how we're going to make sure the impact on our fan base is at a very minimum in terms of losing spaces. We have folks in the parking lot that are some workers, some staff, some others that we can move around and pick up some spots, and then we'll recreate some spots in the lot that we don't have right now. So we think the impact's going to be minimal in terms of the total number. Some people may get moved around a little bit, but we'll make sure we have those answers well before we start that project. Well, we're going to end up with more premium seating. Um, first of all, there's going to be 24 concession points of sales, all new restrooms. And then in the, in the premium area, we're going to have 10 suites, uh, 300 club seats, 8 loge boxes. And then the 
the premium area, entertainment area, basically the restaurant, et cetera, that's going to be seven times larger than it currently is. So it'll benefit both basketball during pregame and halftime, and then obviously that'll be the area for the suite holders and the club areas. Uh, so it's going to be a really, and then what's going to be very beneficial is those south end zone fans now have their own restrooms and concessions, so it eases the, the, the pressure on the east and west side. So it's really going to really complete the Bill Snyder Family Stadium to really close it out. The new video boards will be awesome, so um, the video boards will match the video boards on the north side. The is going to stay pretty much the same. We'll lose those temporary seats in the end zones. That's where the scoreboards will go, but we pick that up in the premium areas as well, so it won't it won't affect the in, it won't increase or decrease. It'll be about the same. How involved was Coach Kleiman in just the, the practice facility and what he wanted in that? We'd already pretty much had the master plan done. Uh, HOK did a tremendous job with the master plan. They're going to be the architect on record for the south end zone. But he got a chance to look at it and gave us some feedback as to what he wanted in terms of practice fields and style. And once we get to actually design that officially, he'll have a lot more input. But he liked, you know, the size, the location. He wanted it as close to veneer as he possibly could get it. Makes their practices much more efficient. So as we get closer to starting that project, he'll have a lot more involvement. Where would the volleyball facility be located? You know where Cat Town is, where our tents are? It's going to fit right up against the outfield. So if our baseball team continues to do well, we'll probably have to put a net up there to keep from banging that side of the wall. But uh, it's going to fit in there. It's going to be a perfect venue for volleyball. The Olympic Training Center is going to be really, really special for all of our sport teams. I think it's going to have the same square footage of the weight room as the veneer does. And then volleyball have 3,500 seats, so it'll be a perfect venue for It'll be also the practice facility as well. Well, that's it for this week's Sources podcast. We packed a lot in this time. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you feel better informed, and we hope you stick with us on the PowerCap podcast. Make sure you subscribe on your favorite download service, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever you prefer. Go get signed up with us, or you can listen right off the streaming app at gopowercat.com with megaphone.fm, the home of the 24-7 sports podcast network. I'm Tim Fitzgerald, and I'll be back on Wednesday with your questions podcast as the PowerCat podcast keeps coming at you daily. You've been listening to the PowerCat Sources podcast presented by Blue Mark Energy. PowerCat podcast, all rights reserved, gopowercat.com and Spirit Street Publishing.